Hey everyone, Professor Snart checking in with our uh, creative writing online class here, English 2250. So we are <clears throat> continuing to move through our units and our due dates here. I'm recording this on Tuesday, so we're just coming up to the due date for unit two. There was a couple of different assignments in there and also a quiz that I added um, last week sometime. So if you maybe weren't looking for it, you may not have seen it. So be sure you've done that little quiz in there as well. It's relatively small point value, but it's uh, testing or quizzing on pretty important um, kind of fundamental uh, knowledge or conceptual stuff that, um, that I'm hoping you can take away from this course. Um, so just a reminder to, you know, be sure you're doing your work uh, in a timely manner, not waiting right till the last minute. Um, and devoting enough time so that you're not, again, waiting to the last minute and doing it all in one big chunk and just all at once like that. Um, oftentimes it works better, especially in a unit like Unit 2, where there's a couple of different things to do, where you're parsing out the time a little bit differently. So we didn't move around to Unit 3, do Thursday, Feb 4, so pretty quick turnaround from that Tuesday to Thursday. Um, and this is a fun one, so we're looking at metaphor, analogy, um, the idea of simile, kind of like that comparative language that is the basis of so much great um, creative writing uh, across different genres. So if we pop into Unit 3 here, there's a reading from our textbook to get things underway, focused a lot on, again, that idea of metaphor, comparative language. They describe it as like an essential tool that writers have, a tool from the toolbox, which is itself is a kind of metaphor. There's a fun little quip, or clip, I should say, from uh, the movie uh, Renaissance Man with Danny DeVito. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I don't like about the clip or the what's going on here, and the audio's not that great, so you might have to turn it up a bit. But it's sort of a fun instance of people learning about what comparative language is, is all about. And if you didn't like that one, you just gotta love the Forrest Gump, Life is Like a Box of Chocolates. It's become its... Uh, its own cliche, but it's sort of fun to watch again here. And so what we're doing then as the work part of the unit is finding um, a metaphor, analogy, simile, sort of that comparative language of our own. And so I'm presenting it here in a kind of uh, really formulaic, almost literally formulaic way. So the best sorts of comparisons, or the ones that we're concerned with here, are taking an abstract thing and it's being compared to a concrete thing, something that you could actually hold or see or touch or, you know, move around the room. Um, so life is like a box of chocolates. And the reason this works nicely as a comparison and why it's such a powerful kind of language tool is that it takes this big, abstract, in some ways unknowable, intangible thing, but it compares it to something that's much more tangible, something that you can actually wrap your mind around. And so in doing that comparison, we actually have insight, not so much on the box of chocolates, right, but of life itself and these aspects of life that are, that are brought forward by the comparison. So what you really don't want is um, an abstract thing compared to another abstract thing. That's a comparison that really, really doesn't work. Often we can do concrete to concrete in, a, in an interesting way, but we're sort of looking for this example uh, you know, the, the abstract to the concrete thing. And as part of your discussion post here, post here, I actually want you to put the, the, the comparison you find in this formula so we can really, really focus on how it works as a comparison of the abstract to the concrete thing. And then, of course, you can tell us about, like, the, the context for where you found this interesting comparison and why it works as a comparison, like what, what aspects of the abstract thing does the concrete thing through the comparison sort of bring to life or, or show you that we might not have been able to, to grapple with quite so clearly before. So one thing to note though is that I don't want you to just go to Google and type in simile or metaphor or comparison. Don't just Google something. I, I can't totally police this, I'll admit it, but, um, but it's kind of obvious in some cases when people haven't really done much of the legwork to find something a little more authentic, like from a favorite book of yours, or a movie, or uh, music is chock block with these things. Um, so don't just Google it and pick the first thing you find and just use that because, you know, it might work, but it has no 
kind of authentic or intrinsic meaning for you personally. We're trying to find ones that actually have some personal meaning, that you have some personal connection to. So a book that you love, um, TV, movie that you love, uh, music that you love, find a great comparison and then share that with us. Give it to us in its formula form here. Well, obviously give us the thing itself, but then in the formula form so we can really see how it works. Tell us a bit about it. And if it happens to be from a movie, we really like to get a clip of that too. So do your best to find an image or a movie uh, clip or even an ebook that you might be able to embed or point us to so that we can visit the thing, not just its little quotation, but in its full kind of uh, contextual situation, right? Okay, so um, a relatively quick unit as far as the reading itself, a couple of quick video clips to watch, and then the assignment. But notice how ideally the assignment potentially takes a little bit longer because hopefully you're not just going to Google an answer. Um, you're going to actually have to investigate a favorite book or revisit a favorite movie, which, hey, might be fun to do anyway, um, to find a comparison that you really think is is cool, but also maybe personally meaningful for to, to you. So it doesn't seem like a lot of work, but it, it can take more time than it might at first appear because of the way that we're doing the assignment. So really, you'd want to get the assignment and then think about it right for a while rather than just trying to sit down at the last minute and answer the question. So that's sort of what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so as always, if you have questions or concerns, be in touch with me and I will talk with everybody soon.